everyone, this is Sarah, the Healthy Home Economist of thehealthyhomeeconomist.com. And with today's video, I'm going to show you how to make homemade soda in your home. Delicious homemade soda that's just every bit as fizzy and delicious as you think perhaps the soda you're drinking from the store is. But I'm going to show you traditional soda. There actually is a history to soda. A soda has been consumed for many centuries. And I think that uh, we humans, we like that bubbly feeling. We like that um, little bit of bubble on the back of our throat. And that's a natural thing, I think, because it's something that comes naturally with good bacteria. When good bacteria ferment um, sugar in, in different forms, you get this effervescence that comes from it. And uh, as a result, I think that as humans, we are attracted to that because by our nature, good bacteria are very healthy for us to consume. So I'm going to show you how to, how to throw away the soda uh, that you may have, the soda made with high fructose corn syrup that is so very unhealthy to consume, how you can get rid of that and replace it in your home with these wonderful um, water kefir uh, homemade sodas that you can, there's endless variation that you can uh, do with what I'm going to show you today to um, make it more to your family's liking, to your personal liking. So feel free to take what I show you today and, and personalize it for your own family. Uh, come up with your own recipes. I'd love you to post your own recipes on the blog. Love to see what you guys are doing out there. Those, um, those of you that have been, already been doing this for a long time, those of you that are new and are trying this for the first time, I'd really like to know how you're doing it so I can get new ideas for my own family. But with that, let me just quickly show you how to do it. It's very easy as, uh, as most things, most traditional cooking is easy. And um, you'll recall that a couple of weeks ago I showed you how to make milk, milk kefir. And I showed you what those look like. They were like little clumps of cauliflower, the actual culture. It's a symbiotic culture of good bacteria and beneficial yeasts. And uh, water kefir grains are similar, except you'll notice that these almost look like little gummy bears. They're separate pieces. They're not little um, clumps like cauliflower. And uh, they also grow a lot more quickly than the milk kefir grains. Which, so you'll be, you'll have a ton of these after making a few batches and you'll be giving them away to your friends and family. Um, so the only, the only key is to get some, for, get some to get you started and um, I'll post on the blog where you can get those. So first of all, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a quart of filtered spring water and then you're going to take a, a quarter cup of either sucanate or rapadura, which is evaporated cane sugar. Um, you don't want to use white sugar for this. Um, sucanate or rapadura is really your best bet. And you can get that at the health food store. You can also get it in bulk from some grain co-ops, which is where I actually get mine. Maple sugar is also an option if you don't have access to rapadura or sucanate. But today I'm going to be using sucanate. So you're going to pour in a quarter cup into your spring water and you're going to stir it up make sure it's nicely mixed and dissolved and that's the basic ingredients is just just the sweetener and the water now you can get a little variation if you'd like you can add a teaspoon of molasses to this if you'd like you can add a teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract if you'd like uh, that makes it more of a cream soda type of a flavor you also can um, reduce the sugar to an eighth of a cup of sugar and reduce the water by one cup and add one cup of fresh juice of your choice and I would say it needs to be fresh don't get uh, any juices from the store because those have been pasteurized and as such have no enzymes and cannot be fermented as easily. You have much more risk of mold using those fruit juices. You're welcome to try them if you'd like, if that's all you can get a hold of. But be uh, aware that your risk of mold is quite high when you use pasteurized juice. Your much better bet is to use um, fresh lime juice, fresh lemon juice, fresh orange juice um, of your choice. And you can mix that in and then, and I'll put all of these um, you know, amounts on the blog in a written form so you don't have to watch the video again um, when you're actually doing it yourself. And then you pour in a quarter cup of the kefir grains. Notice I'm using a wooden utensil. I'm not, I don't use metal. Make sure you don't touch metal to your, um, to your culture as it does weaken it. Now you notice I have a little bit too much water here on the top so I'm going to pour a little bit off because you need to have about an inch or so at the top 
for air for your culture because it needs to uh, to have some air. If you if you fill it all the way to the top, it will not ferment. So you need a little bit of air on the top, and you're going to cap it, and that's it. You're going to leave that on the counter for 48 hours. Now after 48 hours. You're going to open it up and, and taste it. If it tastes too sweet, then close it back up, leave it for another day. And you can keep repeating this up to five days. Uh, but usually after two to three days, it's going to taste, uh, not taste sweet anymore and taste more apple cidery uh, type. And then you are, then it's ready. It's ready to drink. Now what you can do, and here's what it looks like when it's done. You can notice the color is a little bit lighter, not a whole lot. If you've watched my kombucha videos, you notice there's a dramatic change in color from the uh, kombucha before it's fermented till after it's fermented. There's not as much change in color in the kefir um, and the water kefir. You really can tell by tasting it. As you taste it, you can taste the fermentation. You can taste the sweetness going down and the um, bubbliness and the effervescence and the, um, um, the taste of the kefir changes quite dramatically. So it's your taste that's really going to tell you when it's ready as opposed to your vision with the kombucha. So. Um, when it's ready, here's what it looks like. Now, you can drink it as is. That's fine. If you like things a little more bubbly, there will be a little effervescence here. But if you want it really effervescent, then what you can do is go to another step. And that would be bottling your, your uh, water kefir. Now, you can either get empty. Uh, this is a Grolsch beer bottle. You can either get these beer bottles and um, reuse them, empty the beer out, or after you whatever, you can cap it and shut it, you see here, and you can uncap it easily, so these can be used for bottling. You also can get these, um, these bottles, types of bottles, from uh, your local brewer brewery um, company that sells brew brew brewery and wine supplies. Can't get that out, sorry. And uh, we have a couple here in town. I'm sure most metropolitan areas have them. And what you can get is a little bag of caps and a capper and you can pour your, your finished water kefir into the bottle. Always leave a little air. I would leave, I wouldn't fill it any more than here because when you pop these things, they're very bubbly and the foam will just come out really fast. So I always fill them about to here. And on the Grolsch bottle, you want to fill it no more than to where the neck starts. So pour this into here and put your lid on. You can cap it and you're done. You cap it and then you're going to leave these little guys on the counter for another 48 hours. Um, and if it's a winter time, you maybe want to go to two days, but here in our warm, humid climate, I don't leave them much more than a day. And I recommend that you do not open them until you get them nice and cold. So if you leave them for 48 hours, I recommend that you put them in the refrigerator, get them nice and cold, and then open them over the sink. Stick them in the sink like this and pop them in the sink because um, depending how um, fermented or bubbly they have gotten, popping the lid, the whole thing will just come out all over your counter and make a big mess. So you want to open it very very uh, slowly and carefully and make sure it's nice and cold before you do that to limit the, uh, you don't want to lose your whole batch uh, flowing out of the bottle because they will be um, very, very carbonated. <laughs> you will be shocked how carbonated they are and you will be delighted. And what a wonderful drink with uh, summertime heat coming up here in the northern hemisphere. It's uh, going to be a long, hot summer here in Florida, and we love to have our homemade sodas here for the kids, and after mowing the lawn or doing some hot yard work, there's nothing better than a homemade soda to quench your thirst. This is Sarah, the Healthy Home Economist. I hope you've enjoyed our video for today, and any comments and questions, please post them on the blog. I'd be happy to answer them.